Hi, you are now watching an advanced-ish OBS Studio video about something weirdly specific. Allow me to explain. So last time when I made a video about the liquid glass effect inside of OBS Studio, we used a specific effect. I feel like I glanced over that filter and I didn't give a proper explanation. So today I'd like to take the time to understand it so we can master it so we can maybe come up with other creative ways of using it. And that's the video I thought I was making until I realized that I yapped for over an hour and it's really not that deep. So let's rewind back and I'll explain how everything works. It all starts with the Shader-tastic plugin. I've been talking about this one a lot lately. And the creator of the plugin said that I could jump in DMs for filter ideas. So stay tuned for that. So basically you can add the Shader-tastic filter once you have it installed, and then we will choose Displacement Map source. So to explain it briefly, basically this is a filter that will use another source to determine how to distort an image, how to displace that image. Hence the term Displacement Map. So here we add it to our camera. We will create an image that will have a map on how to distort that image. Something like that, for example, that's our displacement map. And then that's the adjustable result that we get. So the first thing we need to understand is the color space option. And thankfully we have an explanation in here. In RGB color space, hex code 808080, which is 50% gray, is the zero value, meaning no displacement. The R and G component define the amount of displacement of a pixel in X and Y respectively. So red and green will determine which direction those pixel will be distorted at. Let's demonstrate. All right, for no displacement, we need 808080, 50% gray, zero saturation. In other words, if this was my displacement, map, nothing would happen to the image. I would actually need some red and some green to see some displacement. So let's add that image as an image source in OBS Studio, place it underneath our source, then go back to that shader-tastic filter and set it to the right displacement map. Make sure we are in RGB because that's what we're using. And now if I move the sliders, strength X and strength Y, meaning how much you want to move it left and right and up and down, we can see some movement happening here. Now I'm using one single slider, the X slider, and you're wondering why is it going opposite direction? Because they are different colors. That's what the colors do. They determine the direction. Same thing for Y, up and down. And of course that works with every single source. You can see me testing it with a camera here. And uh, yeah, that's the type of result you can get. So a basic representation would be this. So red will basically pull up into the right if you're playing with those sliders and green will pull left and down. Of course, 50% gray, desaturated, will not do anything. Now, a trick you can do is actually blur the edges because it will affect the strength, meaning that we have red flowing into gray and green flowing into gray, and you will see the result. And the result is the direction is slowly pulling towards the original position, and it creates that pretty trippy effect. Okay, what about YUV? YUV color space, pretty much the same thing, except any gray color is a zero displacement color. So this is purely based on saturation. As long as it's completely desaturated, it will not move the image. And in this case, the U and V components define the amount of displacement of a pixel and X and Y respectively. So in that case, uh, red and blue. So here you'll see me testing a red and blue shape and you can see the effect that it has. The outside being sharp and then the interior being a little bit blurry. Here you can see me testing a different effect trying to really shape that distortion and this is the result we ended up with. Just an example to show you that you can really shape it into whatever you want. Here you can see we're recreating that rounded rectangle effect. This is for the RGB. And this is the result we get by moving the strength on the Y axis only. Here, I wanted to show something similar to what I did on my tutorial on the liquid glass effect. What we did was create a donut shape and then added opposing colors to each side, which ended up giving us something like this. So here I realized that the RGB color space does not like transparency. We already established that 50% gray would not make anything move, but I thought transparency would have the same effect. It is not the case. If you pull on the strength Y or X and your displacement map source is actually transparent, then every part that's transparent is going to be pulled. If you're only trying to distort part of the image, it's an issue. But at the same time, I realized that we have access to this effect. So if that's an effect that you would like to do, um, it's pretty easy. Choose a transparent image as your displacement map and you'll be able to do this. In fact, with the Move plugin, you might be able to animate that slider. So yeah, when I say experiment with stuff, <laughs> this is exactly what I mean. This is how you find out how many cool things you can do with a simple plugin just by being like me and spending one hour and 20 minutes playing around with it. So basically in the RGB color space, transparent equals 
red because it's like full strength red and it's going to act like it was full red. And YUV, however, transparent equals gray. So transparency will not display your original image at all. Now, of course, there's a question. How do other colors affect the direction of the displacement? So we can just test it. Every time you have a question and it will take five seconds to test it, just test it. One of the best ways for humans to learn is through experiment. I'll push the X strength. All right actually pretty predictable, and then the Y strength. In this case, it appears that other colors don't really, really push it that much into other directions. I expected it to have a lot of zigzags, but truly it's mostly going from the red and then switching direction once it reaches the blue. Let's try another one. So we have the gradient at an angle. Actually, before we switch, let's test uh, YUV. What would it be? Oh, so we can see that the different colors have a different effect. I don't know why UV seems softer every time. Let's go back to RGB and let's try this one. Whoa. <laughs> so this is what I mean. You see at the bottom here, the body is not really affected. And that's because we have pure green. And I'm guessing up top we have pure red. Yep. But you can see the separation between colors. Let's see what that looks like in YUV. <laughs> and we have a, a completely different effect. Let me see, is red and blue opposite here? That is very interesting. Am I misunderstanding it? Because look at the colors that are less distorted. Those are like the supposed to be the pure colors affected. We have yellow and purple-ish blue. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. If you guys are color space expert, Definitely correct me in the comments, would appreciate it because something is not adding up. So something else I tested in the original video is creating a grid like that with the colors and seeing what kind of effect it would give. It ended up giving that frosted glass effect and it gave me an idea. I was like, hey, what if I animated this? So I went into Adobe After Effects, created a small little animation and tested it. I imported it as a media source, put it in a loop. And then from the shader tastic filter, I just chose it as the displacement map and selected it. And this is where <laughs> you can see me <laughs> react to it. So you can definitely have a video be your displacement map. And that's the, the big advantage with this. Um, since it's going to be a source, for example, let's say I added a composite blur to said source. Would it affect the displacement? Absolutely. You can adjust it on the spot. Not only can you use the move plugin to maybe move those sliders, the X and Y, but you can also use it to animate uh, whatever displacement map you have with their settings too. I think I'm going to show the composite blur here. Composite blur is another plugin for OBS. It's a blur plugin. And uh, you can see I'm blurring it now and testing it. And now I have more of a wobbly um, heat displacement map effect. Or for my motion designers out there, a turbulent displacement. Look how happy I am. <laughs> Look at that. Now we get some proper zigzag. <laughs> Diamond shaped. Nice. Ooh. Damn. Whoa. Let's try YUV. There it is. I'm telling you, YUV always feels softer somehow. Okay, so one last thing on the subject of transparency. Why would you want to use transparency when you have gray? Let's export this as a transparent background. So in YUV, it behaves the way you want it to. But then in RGB, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> Unless that's what you're looking for. Let's go back to YUV. So the reason why you would want to use something like that is if you want to turn this into, let's say you want to slightly move it slightly give it a distortion and you want to turn it into a button a ui component just a little frame to put some information on screen what you can do is use the stroke glow shadow effect well effect plugin <laughs> the stroke glow shadow plugin and add a shadow to this to make it stand out a little bit better as a source we're going to pick the displacement which is this two there it is just make sure it's centered Control d and it fits the screen Control f there it is. Now I can add a little bit of a shadow or if I change the color, I can make it into some sort of glow. There we go. Very soft and it really stands out. If I turn it off and on again, you can see the effect. So that's why transparency was something important to me. Also, last, 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 last comment. I promise I use Photoshop just to demonstrate. You don't need to use Photoshop to create those red and green or red and blue circles. Those are things that you can make within OBS Studio using color sources. Just put them in the group and choose the group as the displacement map source. That's pretty much all there is to it. In other words, those are the essentials. I highly suggest you, you know, do the test, do the blurring and all that. See the results you get. What is it like?
like when it blends into another color? What is it like when it blends into the gray? What is it like when it blends into transparency, aka when it's just blurry? I'll probably be doing more research on this, but for the meantime, this is the extent of my knowledge on displacement in OBS Studio. Oh yeah, and uh, please subscribe.